Luke chapter number 15, verse number 11. The Bible says, to illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The, like, like, the young man was, like the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go back home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. Verse 20, so he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Last verse, Luke chapter, num Luke chapter number nine, verse number one. One day, Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. I want to take the next few moments that we have together, and I want to preach to you a sermon entitled, The Believer's Authority. The Believer's Authority. You may be seated today in the presence of our God. I remember one time when I was younger, I was making my way home, and as I was making my way home, I was in my car with my mom and dad, and we were on Loop 20, and as we were making our way home, usually on Loop 20, you're going about 60, 65, 75, I see you at the church, you know, like you're making your way home, you're trying to pass up people on the loop, and I remember that as we were on the loop, I started to feel my dad go slower and slower and slower, and I started to wonder, what is the deal? I've seen people go on loop 20, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80 sometimes. And I'm wondering, why is my dad slowing down on loop 20? And I remember that as we were coming towards the light on the loop, I noticed that, there, that the light wasn't working. It was just flashing a certain color. And as I was coming across that, I saw that there was this skinny police officer that was in the middle of the road pointing in our direction. Direction. And then on the other side of the road, there was another skinny police officer, and they were in front of the cars in the middle of Loop 20 with their hands like this, and cars were stopping. And I remember that as a kid, I was fascinated when I saw that, because here I see a man about 180 to 195 pounds wearing a police officer uniform and is standing in the middle of a road on loop 20 putting his hand out and people are stopping when he says stop and people are going when he says go and I started to wonder that's fascinating to me because this man he does not have the power to physically be able to stop a vehicle 
This man, no matter if he was six foot five, seven foot, if he weighed 295 pounds, no matter his weight or his size, this man was not going to be able to stop an SUV traveling at 65 miles an hour. This man, this police officer was not going to be able to stop. He was not going to be able to have the power or strength to physically stop an 18-wheeler going 65 on loop 20. But I remember that as I was remembering this story, as I was preparing this sermon, I thought, wow, those police officers, they don't have the power. They might not have the height. They might not have the weight. But when they stand in the middle of the road, what is it that makes them be able to say stop and cars have to stop? What is it that makes these cars, these 18-wheelers, these trucks stop when they see these men? And I started to remember oh, it's because these police officers, they have a badge on their shirt, on their uniform, and that badge represents the entire police force. That badge, it represents the entire force of the mayor's office. That badge, it represents the authority that they've been given by the police academy, uh, by, by the police academy, by the police force, by the mayor, and people in command, and because of the authority that they have, they can be able to say stop and things have to stop. Friend, in the same way, you and me have been given authority by God himself to be able to tell devils, to be able to tell demons, to be able to tell the attack of hell that's rising up against us and our families and our businesses to say stop and it must stop. Friend, you and me, the moment that we come to Jesus, the Bible says, we read this story, Jesus, he says this story to these people. It's about the prodigal son, and the story is fascinating. It's about this son who thought he was ready to get what belonged to him, but he ends up asking for something that was going to be given to him at another time, too early. And the Bible says that when he gets it, he leaves home. He goes to another land and he wastes all his money on wild living. Goes to parties, is 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 uh, is having it, uh, like like a like a intercourse with prostitutes. He's just living a wild life. And the Bible says that one day comes and the money just runs out. There's no more money to buy alcohol. There's no more money to do this or to do that. But there's no longer money for him to even be able to buy food. And not only that, the Bible says that the day that he spent all his money, a famine rose up on the land. And now not only did he not have money to buy food, but there was a shortage of food. And the Bible says that this son, this younger son, he comes to his senses and he says, wow, look at me. I lived in my father's house and my father took care of me for everything. Physically, I was taken care of. Emotionally, I was taken care of. Uh, financially, I was taken care of. I didn't have a worry in the world when I lived at home and now look at me out here. I'm trying to eat what, what the pigs eat and no one's giving me nothing. So he says, you know what? Forget this, I'm gonna go back home. And I know my dad's gonna be mad at me, and, and, and I know my, 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 my like, like my dad might scream at me, but whatever, I don't care, I'm just gonna go back home. I'm gonna say, Father, I've sinned against you in heaven. I'm not worthy of being called your son, but just hire me as a servant. Well, the Bible says that he comes back home. And as he's, as he's in a far distance, as he's preparing his speech to be able to talk to his father and say, I'm sorry, it says that the father would stand outside of his home and look for his son. And when he sees his son in the far distance, he runs towards him, he hugs him, he kisses him, but he does something fascinating. Jesus says that when the father kissed him and hugged him, he asked for the servants to bring stuff to, to the sons. The Bible says that, that, that the father is like, bring him a robe. Bring him sandals for his feet. And I could talk about that, but I, I don't have time. But the significant thing that the father gave this son was a ring. 
This was no ordinary ring. This was a signet ring. And in the Bible, rings were not just accessories that women or men wore. These were not just things to be able to look cool and be able to match your, 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 your clothes with. No, no, rings had a significance. And the significance that rings had, especially a signet ring, is that they were being given as authority being given to them. Friend, the moment that the son came home, the Bible says that God gave the, like the son authority in the same way you and me, when we come to God and we say, God, we're sorry, we've messed up, I repent. The Bible says that God forgives and he forgets, but he gives us authority. Come on and give God praise if you believe that. Well, okay, well, what's the authority for? Let me tell you what the authority is for. The authority is for you to be able to say stop towards whatever the enemy is throwing at you, is to be able to break the chains that, that the enemy has you in. You have the authority to be able to say stop. The Bible says that whatever you bind on the earth, God will bind in the heavens. So you have the authority to be able to say no devil you won't have my wife no devil you won't have my children no devil you won't have my business or my vision you can have it we serve the Lord but then the Bible says that whatever that whatever you loose on the earth God will loose in the heavens so not only do you have authority to be able to break the attack of the enemy but you have the authority to open up the windows of heaven and cause a blessings to flow devil you won't have my wife we're gonna have a great marriage devil you won't have my children my children will be mighty in the land devil you're not gonna have my business everything I lay my hand to will prosper that's the authority that you and me have well how and why do we get this authority well you get it by coming home the same way that this son who thought he knew it all who thought he had it all together who thought money was gonna make him happy he found out quickly money didn't satisfy him money didn't fulfill him but when he came back home he was forgiven and he was given authority now how do you make it work in your life because here's the thing I've come to notice that there's a lot of churches there's a lot of pastors that aren't able to prepare the people of God to be able to go into a world that's broken and hurting and I'm telling you today the Bible says that we don't wage war against flesh and blood but our battle our spiritual warfare is against things in the unseen realm it's against evil rulers and principalities of darkness I'm telling you, you are in a fight right now. You're in a fight right now. And the thing that the enemy wants is to push you around and beat you up and treat you like a punching bag. Well, he's depressed. Yeah, I'm depressed. Well, you made this mistake. Yeah, I made this mistake. No, you're not the devil's punching bag. You're not, oh, you're, you're not under the, like, like the devil. No, the Bible says that the devil is not over our head. The devil is under our feet. I'm telling you today that whatever warfare you have in your your life you can fight back you don't gotta take what the devil's throwing at you you don't gotta be defeated you don't gotta be depressed you don't gotta be anxious well Alex it's because everybody nowadays is depressed I know everybody and their mothers nowadays is being classified as anxious or depressed but baby not the children of God we are free we're whole we're delivered the joy of the Lord is our strength but the same way that I'm able to declare things with authority in the same manner, you got authority from Jesus to be able to break every chain and break every sickness and be able to open up the heavens and say, I'm ready for my miracle. I'm ready for my blessing. I'm ready for my favor. You and me got authority. That authority 
It comes not by way of something we do, but by way of who you and me are. We're not weaklings. We're not losers. We're children of the Most High God. We're strong. We're courageous. We're bold. We're called out of darkness to be able to stand in God's glorious light. Friend, you have authority. And what I really want to help you today is to be able to get your fight back. There are so many people that don't know how to fight. There are so many Christians that don't know how to fight. Now, I'm not talking about I'm going to teach you how to do a right hook or a left hook. or a, no, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about physical fighting. I'm talking about spiritual fighting. How do you and me fight spiritually? Number one, we fight spiritually by coming to church. Because when, when we come to church, we get under the preaching. And when we hear the preaching, our faith grows. How else do we fight? We pray. We pray without wavering. We pray when things aren't moving. We pray when, when, when we don't see nothing, when we don't feel nothing, we keep on praying. How else do you and me fight? We praise. We praise God that he's a good God. We praise God he's come through in, in the past and he'll come through again in the now. We worship. That's another way we fight. We worship God. We don't let the devil take our worship away. We say, God, you can have it all. You can have my finances. You can have my past, my present, and my future. Here I am lifting up my hands in your sanctuary, in my car, in my house, in my shower, and I'm worshiping you. How else do we fight? We speak in other tongues. That's the power of speaking in tongues. When you're able to have the heavenly language and you don't know what to pray, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will pray for you and say things that you don't even know how to say. I'm telling you, you're in a fight. And you got to get your fight back. There's a lot of times that I've talked to people. You know, I wrote this message because this past week I had a friend message me. He said, Alex, man, I want to go to your college and, and, and like career service. I want to be there so bad. But I, as I left my house and got into my car, I started to have this panic attack. I started to have this panic attack. Oh my God, what about this? What about that? And I, and I just couldn't go to church, so I'm sorry. I missed out. And that's just one of many stories. I've heard so many people who don't know how to fight, even though they have spiritual warfare. They get panic attacks. They get anxiety attacks. They get depressed. They get tired. They, they get stressed. Friend, when the devil comes in like a flood, don't let him treat you like a punching bag. No, fight back. Use the word of God. Say, devil, you can't stop my purpose. Devil, you can't stop my destiny. I'm a child of God. So I told them the same thing I told you. I said, bro, I'm so sorry to hear that, but don't let the devil put a whooping on you like that. You have authority. When those panic attacks come, you come and just say the name of Jesus. Say Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I'm telling you that when you say his name, devils and demons, they got to flee. You have authority when you get anxious and you get worried and you have doubts and you, and, you, and you don't know, well, is God really like this? Don't worry about what you don't know about God. Just remember what you do know about God. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a restorer. He's a life-giving, chain-breaking God. You don't know how many times I've talked to people and doubt is through the roof. Well, Alex, what do you think about this? Where do kids go to if they die? Well, Alex, what do you think about this? What about homosexuality? Well, what about abortion? Well, what about this? What and I just tell them, look, bro, I might not have all the answers, but I do know who my God is. He's a life-giving, chain-breaking, but he's a miracle worker. He's a way maker. He's a loving God. He's a great God. He's a big God. He's a powerful God. So no matter what I don't know, I live my life by what I do know. 
Alex, I just really want to get my, 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 my questions answered. Well, you know what? By all means, go and live defeated and keep on looking for all your answers. But as for me and my house, I know I don't have it all together. I don't have all the answers, but I'm okay with finding out in heaven. For me and right now, I'm going to live free. I'm going to live whole because Christ has given me authority. Friend, you don't got to take what the enemy's throwing at you. You don't got to be defeated. You don't got to be depressed. You don't got to be anxious. You don't have to have suicidal thoughts. And if you're in here and you want to argue and say, yes, I do got to be depressed. Yes, I do. Well, then by all means, you already lost. But I'm not talking to defeated people. I'm talking to people that have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus and have been able to say, I'm not staying in my tomb. I'm coming out. Come on, if there's somebody in here who says, I'm coming out, give God praise right now. Luke chapter number 9, it's as clear as day. The Bible says Jesus told his disciples and he gave them power and authority. There's a difference between power and authority. Power is divine energy that flows through a natural body. Authority is delegated power. Those police officers, because of the badge they have on their uniform and because of the authority that's been given to them and because they know that they have the full backing of the police force are able to stand on loop 20 and look at an 18-wheeler and say, stop! In the same way you and me have authority because you know who's backing us up. It's not just some weak God. It's not just some, 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 some Jesus who was a great teacher and a great preacher. No, we have the greatest backup in the universe. His name is Jesus. Death couldn't stop him. The hell and grave couldn't keep him. We got the greatest backup. Friend, when you know who's backing you up, you won't worry about what devil's in front of you. When you know what God is walking before you and is walking with you and is behind you, then you won't have to worry about your past or your present or your future. That's what I love about our God. The Bible says our God walks with us, he walks towards us, and he walks and he walks behind us. That means that he covers us in our past, he covers us in our present, and he covers us in our future. Baby, there's nowhere you can run that God's grace doesn't cover you. Friend, you have authority. You have the God of heaven backing you up. You don't gotta, oh, it's because I had a panic attack. I had to stay in my car. I couldn't go, go to church. You know what? I speak to every person that has a panic attack right now in this room, that has problems with anxiety and is watching online or is in this room. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. You'll never miss another Sunday. You'll never miss an, another day at church because of panic attacks or anxiety. I'm telling you, you and me have authority. We have authority over demons and we have authority over sickness and disease. So don't let the devil push you around. Don't let the devil tell you who you are. The devil didn't create you. He doesn't have a say over who you are and who you're not. God created you. God loves you. God has a plan for you. I don't know why it is. That Christians let devils talk more to them than God does. Why is it that believers don't have authority? Why is it that the children of God are going to and fro on the earth and are being beat up by devils and attacks and demons? Let me tell you why. It's because there hasn't been a revelation. There hasn't been power in, uh, deposited in them to be able to act on the authority that Christ has given them. Friend, Christ has given you authority. You're not just anybody. You're somebody special to God. You're not just some other Laredo him. Well, you know, I live on a border town. No. Well, I come from a border town. No. 
You're not just somebody. You're not just anybody. The Bible says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. The Bible says that before you ever had a name, before there was ever hair on your head, before your parents ever knew you or thought about you, God knew you. And not only did he know you, he loved you. Friend, you're not on this earth to live defeated. You're not on this earth to live broken. You're not on this earth to just have a nine to five. You're not on this earth to just have a marriage that's barely making it. You're not just on the earth to go and be a middle schooler like every other middle schooler. No, you have power and you have authority over every attack from hell and authority over sickness and disease. And it's time that the church rises up and starts acting with that authority. No more panic attacks. No more anxiety keeping us from the presence of God. No more regret keeping us from from our future. No, we have authority. I am a child of God. I'm not my past. I'm not a loser. I'm not weak. I'm not just anybody. I'm a child of God. I'm called by him. I've been appointed. I've been anointed. I'm loved and I'm forgiven. Friend, this is the believer's authority. The believer's authority. The believer's authority. The believers are able to declare. The believers are able to destroy. Friend, I'm telling you today, you have the power to bind things on the earth and you have the power to release things on the earth. Christ did not die just so you could be forgiven. Christ died so you could be forgiven and empowered. Christ died and resurrected so that you and me could be able to walk in the authority that Christ has given us. Don't take whatever the devil's throwing at you. Get your fight back. Get your fight back. You're not the devil's punching bag. Don't let him push you around, kick you around, tell you who you are, tell you about your past. I'm telling you, when the devil tells you about your past, tell him about his. Devil, you didn't stop me. Devil, you were so great, but you messed up and you can never get back. But me, I messed up and I can be forgiven. I can get, I, I can get mercy. I can get grace. Friend, God wants to give you authority. But you have to put it to work. You have to put that authority to work. Stop letting a teacher have more control over your children than you. Stop letting a counselor have more control over your marriage than you. Stop letting a banker have more control over your business and your dreams. No, you have authority. You say, Father, whatever I lay my hand to will prosper. My marriage will prosper. My children will prosper. My business will prosper. My dreams, my everything I lay my hand to will prosper. Use the authority. Use it. Get your fight back. With the head.